Hello and welcome to module 5.3. So in the previous video, we looked at how we can reduce the search space uh, to have a far fewer frequencies to search over when we have assisted GPS. And so now we're going to look at how we do that search and how we design the width of the bins that we're going to search in the frequency space. So this was uh, where we finished up on the previous video, and you remember that we had reduced this frequency search space. So instead of searching all the way out to the edge, we only have to search between the lines. And we'll choose to search in different bins along here. And how do we decide, how do we know how wide those bins have to be? That's what we're going to look at today. So let's, let's focus on the sensitivity to frequency of this curve. So remember, frequency axis was this axis. And you'll see that as you change your frequency, the response is like that. And if we look at the shadow of this, this three-dimensional curve just on this wall, then you just get the response with respect to frequency. So that's what we're focusing on. And so what, what is this function that we're looking at? Well, it turns out it's something called a normalized sync function of the frequency multiplied by the coherent integration time. And so we write that as sync of the frequency offset times the coherent integration time. That's the coherent integration time is how long we integrate the signal for after doing the correlation. And then the frequency offset, of course, is just the, that axis there. So what is this normalized sync, sync function? Well, it's equal to sine of pi times the argument. So pi f t c over pi f t c. That's the normalized sync function. And you'll, you'll see it written out there. Sine pi f t c over pi f t c. And uh, it's the magnitude of this. Because we, when we look at our correlation peak, we always take magnitudes. And so, so everything here is a, is a magnitude. And so that describes this function. It goes down to 0. And because it's a magnitude, it comes up again. And so this is the response to a frequency error. And so now that we, we know that formula, we can try out different values of coherent interval and frequency offsets and decide how wide a bin we can search for before we must go and search another frequency. And so how wide we search for is depends on how far down we're prepared to go, how much sensitivity we're prepared to give up. Because if you're searching at this frequency here, for the signal, you're going to, instead of getting the peak here, you're going to pick up a correlation peak at a magnitude there. So we have to decide how much of that peak we're prepared to give up when we do our search. And the, the more we're prepared to give up, the wider our bins, the less we have to search, but the less our sensitivity. And the, uh, conversely, the finer we make our bins, the better our sensitivity, but the longer it takes to find the signal. So, so let's look at a particular frequency bin of the width shown by that, that white line, and then project that up there and say, OK, in this case, let's suppose it's 500 hertz wide, i.e. plus or minus 250 hertz, and let's see how this works out. And it's, of course, it's, it's going to work out nicely because I knew the answer before uh, I started making the slide. But we'll see why it works out nicely. So, so in this little gray box here, we'll uh, start with, with the equation. So um, we, we've got that sync function that's, that's there for us. And we, let's, let's fix a, a coherent in a interval of one millisecond. Now that's a standard GPS coherent interval because the PRN code is one millisecond long. So you have to integrate for at least one millisecond to get the proper autocorrelation function uh, of the PRN code. And so that's a very typical value. So, so that fixes our value of TC. And let's write it in seconds. That's 10 to the minus 3 seconds. And we've decided to look at a frequency bin of 500 hertz total width. So f 
is equal to plus or minus 250 hertz. So that's how much the frequency error goes one way or the other way from the peak. And so the maximum error occurs at either of those limits, at plus 250 or minus 250. And so what, how far down from the peak is that? Well, that's what, that's what the sync function gives us. So let's write it out. So we're looking at sine of pi times, so now it's the frequency, the, the worst frequency of 250 hertz times 10 to the minus 3, so that's 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and the whole thing divided by pi times 0 0.25, and it's the magnitude of that, and if we go plug that into a calculator, we'll see that we get 0 0.90 of that, and if we want this in dBs, this is the first time we've really come across a case that we warned of earlier on where you want to take dBs, but you're looking at a magnitude ratio. What you're looking at here are all magnitudes. So remember, if we're going to take dBs, we need a, a power ratio. We want 10 times log 10 of the same thing, of this sine of dot, 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 all of the, the above. But we have to square it to get a power ratio before we can take 10 log 10. And so if we do that and put the 0.9 in there, we get out minus 1 dB. And so you get these nice numbers. 0.9 of, a D, of the magnitude comes down by 0.9, and that's 1 dB down. And so that's why 500 hertz is a, a nice bin width, because it, it gets you, you, you lose, at worst, 1 dB. And so if we, if we take away the handwriting and clean it up, then there you'll see the same numbers written out neatly. And so, so this is a, a very common standard GPS bin width that you would search because when you, if you find nothing, if you start searching along the edge here and you find nothing, you know that, that well, you, you just move along and start searching next to it at 500 hertz and, and so on. And you know that in each of these bins, the worst sensitivity you give up is one dB because when you finally do come across the signal, wherever the signal is in this particular bin, the peak can't be more than one dB of, of away because of that, that uh, analysis we just did, that you couldn't have moved down more than one dB. And so, so these are nice numbers, one millisecond and plus or minus 250 hertz. And so, well, what about if you wanted to make those bins twice as wide, or if you ask yourself a different question, what if I was prepared to give up 2 dB of sensitivity and, and search uh, wider bins? Where, where would 2 dB go? And so instead of doing this by hand, the, the, the way you, you do this is write yourself a function in something like MATLAB. And so this has been done for you. And there's this function called plot sync, which is on the course site. So you can download this and run it in MATLAB. And it, it, you'll, if I've just uh, shown a little excerpt of the code here, uh, and you'll see it makes use of the built-in MATLAB sync function and it just scales it uh, to the GPS frequencies. And then so if we run that in MATLAB, plot sync of one millisecond, then we it'll plot that and then show for you where the 1 dB point is, the 2 dB point, and so on. You see the 1 dB points, you can see it here, about plus or minus 250 hertz, just like we worked out. and that corresponds to what we just worked out on, on the previous slide. So when you've got this MATLAB function, then you can, you can try different values. And one of the things that you, could, that you can notice right away is that the sync function is linear with its argument uh, frequency times coherent interval, so, which means that if you double a coherent interval, that sync function just gets twice as small. And so I've shown two examples here. So this one was Tc equals one millisecond. And this one in the middle is Tc equals 11 milliseconds. And wh why am I showing you this? Well, wh when we've just looked at assisted GPS, and this whole module is about assisted GPS and how we 
narrow the search space. And one of the benefits of narrowing the search space is there's less to search. And therefore, we could, we could spend longer integrating in, e in each frequency bin. And we could make the frequency bins narrower and, and because we don't have so many frequencies to search. And so and th this is what happens if we make the if we increase our coherent integration time, the bin does get narrower as shown there, and that, that's how much narrower it gets. And so we'll use this MATLAB function to go zoom in on that. And so this is what the sync function looks like with 11 millisecond coherent interval. So I'll just highlight that. So this is TC equals 11 millisecond. You'll see the shape looks exactly the same because we've just scaled the axis. And instead of going down to 1 dB at plus or minus 250 hertz, it's more like uh, some, something like 20 hertz. And PPB, it's plus or minus 15 PPB. So that's quite narrow. And so how do we, if we chose this coherent interval, how do we search a wider search range? Well, what we would do is you, we'd, we'd choose a level of sensitivity that we're comfortable giving up. And like, like I suggested before, 1 dB is the value. So we'd say we let, we'd search across to here, and we reach plus or minus 15 ppb. If we hadn't found the signal, then we'd search one frequency bin over. And so what that would look like is we'd, we'd overlay another one here, and we'd put this, this frequency bin offset by twice 15, which is 30 ppb. And we'd search there. And if we didn't find anything there, we'd move to the left and search the third bin there, and the fourth there, and the fifth there. And that's how you go about searching. Uh, all of the frequency search space with whatever bin width you've decided to use.